ladies and gentlemen. Hello, this is Michael Moore. It's time to rumble. Episode 14. On the second day of the new year, the man who was appointed by the Electoral College to be the President of the United States, not the man who was elected by a vote of the people of the United States, decided to kick off the new year and the new decade by assassinating one of the leaders of one of the major countries not only of the Middle East, but of the world. And I've been trying to figure out what to do about it. What can I, as one individual citizen, do about it? You know, the sense that we, I know everybody listening to this has, what do we do? What can I do? It's the sense of utter helplessness and hopelessness. And and now this, this is bad. No, I mean, seriously, this is really bad. And I don't mean just because we are now in danger as Americans. I mean, because we, I would hope we, the majority of Americans, morally think this is wrong and are deeply offended by the assassination of a leader of another country. So I've been trying to figure out what to do. And today's podcast is an open letter from myself to the people of Iran, and especially to the government of Iran. I send this out to the Ayatollah Khomeini, its president, Hassan Rouhani, its new leader of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Ismail Ghani, and to its parliament and everyone else who makes up the, the leadership of the nation of Iran. I would like to make an appeal to you, but I start by saying this to you in all humility and respect. I understand watching the news today, um, how upset uh, people are, how angry, um, how much people are wanting to respond with violence, revenge, justice. And I am not going to say that you don't have a right to feel that way. It's just simple empathy, isn't it? How would most Americans or people of any country feel if the leader of another country, in this case, the country that is the militarily the most powerful on earth, decides to use its weapons to assassinate a leader in your country? What if you Iranians had killed our secretary of defense? had killed our vice president, had killed the Joint Chiefs of Staff. How would we have felt? How would we have responded? (laughs) Frankly, we wouldn't have waited this long. It's been a couple of days. So I understand all of that. And I offer not only no excuses for this, but from one human to millions of human beings in Iran, Uh, an apology. So I want to say that. I want to say that to you listening, that not only myself, but tens of millions of Americans, maybe hundreds of millions, are sorry that this happened because this isn't how it should work. This isn't how we are to get along, how we are to negotiate our differences, how we are to whatever. This is not that world. And I'm telling you, I am not alone in this. You need to hear this loud and clear, please. That, that this is not one American saying this. This is millions upon millions upon millions of Americans. And never, p- please, don't forget that this person we refer to as the president was not elected by a majority of Americans. He lost the vote. Okay, so listen, let me say something. I get it when there's a revolution and a new country is formed, it doesn't always go right. Things don't happen the right way. I, and I say this again, with all due respect to the leadership in Iran, you have a lot of people that don't particularly care for how you've been running the country. Uh, well, that's true in any country, isn't it? But in this particular case, 
since your revolution, since you overthrew the United States of America, and let's be clear about that, that's what you did. You overthrew the dictator that we installed to run Iran. We, we, did I say we? Yes, well, we meaning the United States and the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Um, That's who did that back in the 50s. We installed a dictator called the Shah of Iran. I don't need to tell you your own history. And in 1979, you decided to have a revolution and you overthrew the Shah and you kicked us out and you took over our embassy and you held the workers there as hostages for almost a year because you had had it decades of torture and abuse by our man in Tehran, the Shah. And so you form a new government and it's essentially run by religious leaders, by a religion, you know? I'm, I don't know if the Ayatollah and the other leaders there, have, I don't know if you've listened to my podcast or read my writings, you probably have guessed by now I'm not a big fan of countries that are set up as religions or run by religions. Um, and I, you sort of feel that way yourselves because there is a country near you. Um, so you don't like that. And I don't like it anywhere. I don't like it whether whether it's there or you or me. I mean, I had to I had to spend the better part of my adulthood from 1980 to when we finally elected a Muslim as president in 2008. Um, as as a we lived under the tyranny of something called the religious right, the moral majority. They elected Ronald Reagan, and all of a sudden, our rights. And our laws were filtered through a crazed, extremist, religious uh, entity that really got laws passed and ran this country. So, so uh, I get it. I get the. I get the. Let's have the religion run the thing part. And I also get that it doesn't work. So, but I'm not here today to criticize. How in fact, in fact, I'll say this: I, as an American, because I belong to a country that ravaged your country, that removed its democratically elected leader, that installed a dictatorship, and created such misery, misery for your people, that was paid for by the tax dollars of the United States of America, and I am sorry about that. And I am sorry about everything that has happened in between. And I am sorry that the person who sits in the Oval Office, even though he issued the order from the main dining room of his elite estate club in Florida, the order to assassinate one of the leaders of your country. I get it, man. You are pissed off and you should be pissed off. And I don't, I don't blame you a single bit for that feeling, but I want to make a request and I want to make this appeal directly to you. And I do this with, again, with all sense of, of, of humility and respect and understanding that I, as an American citizen, am the last one uh, that really anybody should listen to in your country or around the world, considering our behavior. Not just this, you know all the other things we've done to you, I would like to ask you as much as you have the right to, as much as I understand why you want to and are going to, I would like to ask you, the leadership of the country of Iran, to not respond with violence against the United States for what the United States has done to you this week. I I make this request. It's a humble and, and, and I'm certain you're, as you're hearing this, you're thinking, well, okay, Mike, (laughs) thanks, but no thanks. But I want, I want to, I want to suggest a a, a different way. I want to suggest a different way for you to win. I want, I want you to consider what would happen if you, if you didn't do what Trump and the U S Pentagon is expecting you to do. What if you didn't, what if you didn't follow their script? What if you said, no, we're smarter than you. 
we actually believe in the things we say we believe in. We believe in our God and we believe in our book, the Quran, and we are not going to use violence and we are not going to kill because you kill. We're not going to lower ourselves to you. We're not going to respond with revenge. Now, look, I know that you, like most countries on this planet, um, Iceland accepted, I guess we'll just leave them out of this, but, you know, most countries kill or have killed in the past. And uh, you're no different. And you have done things and you've participated in things for whatever justification and reason that you may have or think you have, you have used violence. You used it in your revolution. So did we. We used violence in, in our revolution. We killed British. We killed them while they would they would just line up for us. They would they would even like we didn't even wait for them to get their guns ready. We would just kill them. We killed British. Our neighbors, the Canadians, they didn't kill the British. They just, you know, waited them out. They figured probably, well, you know, they're gonna leave sooner or later. It's freaking cold here. And they did. The British just left. And that was only maybe I don't know, 80 years after our revolution. We have a great constitution, but we have many parts of this constitution that aren't so great. We didn't get it right. And you are in now, what is this? The uh, 40th year of your revolution, of your new state, of your new country. And you know, you did, you got a lot of things right, but that's not what this request is about. I, I am asking you to do something that is probably not in your uh, wheelhouse because it certainly isn't in ours in the United States. I swear to God, we would have blown you up by now if you'd done this to us. So I'm asking you not to do that. I'm asking you to try what, what Martin Luther King and Gandhi would say is the, takes the most amount of courage, which is to respond with nonviolence. Now, you can say to me, yeah, well, good idea, but Trump isn't going to stop there. Well, I, I know that. I know that Trump Trump has a much larger plan here. He's been saying it since he ran for president that he was going after you. So what I want you to do, what I'm asking you to do is to leave this up to me. Give me, give me uh, 10 months. Give me 10 months and I and millions of others of Americans will remove Trump from the White House, nonviolently. We'll remove him either in the coming weeks in the United States Senate because of the trial that he's going to go through, or we'll remove him at the ballot box in November. Either way, he's going. And if you could just please wait, please not kill anybody until you give me and tens of millions of other Americans, the chance. Let us deal with him. We don't agree with him. We don't agree with what he's done. He's ours to deal with, not you. I mean, yes, he's your problem because of what he's done and what he plans to do, but he really ultimately is our problem. He is our responsibility. He's our mistake and we will fix it. We will fix it. You do not need to kill Americans. You do not need to harm our soldiers who are based in that region and elsewhere. These kids signed up mainly because they come from poor and working class families. The rich do not serve in this country. The poor and working class, the, the people of color, that serve in our military. So many of them, when they were sent to Iraq, did not want to go to Iraq. They signed up after 9-11 because we were attacked and they wanted to do something to help, to help defend the country. You understand that, right? But now there's no reason to kill them. There's no reason to kill American civilians. There's no, there's no point in it because it will only escalate further this doesn't have a good ending if it's tit for tat here. We kill your guy, you kill our guy. We kill your civilians, you kill our civilians. 
it's not going to work. Let me fix it. Let me step in here. And when I say me, I'm speaking I'm, on behalf, literally, of tens, if not hundreds of, of millions of Americans. Look, there's 63 million that voted for Trump. 63 million. There's 330 million of us. I'm telling you, he is not us. And we will fix this. He'll either be convicted in the United States Senate and removed. I know most people don't think that that will happen. No, I'm saying that either we remove him in the Senate or we remove him in November, but we're going to remove him. And I ask that you please wait and not harm anyone. Let us do our job. We are responsible for this. And if we don't, if we don't remove Trump, I know that's what you're thinking, right? Then what? What am I able to ask you to do then? I asked you to put off for 10 months your retaliation, and then we as Americans don't do our job. Well, I'm certainly not going to uh, suggest that you can go ahead and harm him or any civilian or any soldier or whatever. I'm still opposed to killing even then, but I'm just telling you that why not at least give this a chance? Let us do what needs to be done. Let's us make sure that not another Iranian citizen is killed. And for certain allies of ours who would like to see us be in a war, like to see us kill more Iranians, we'll do our best too to make sure that we elect a president that will not participate in that behavior any longer. Just give me the chance. That's really all I'm asking. Give me Michael Moore and the tens of millions of Americans who agree with me. Give us, let us just take care of our problem so that the nation of Iran and the nations of this world will not have to suffer as a result of the decisions made by President Donald Trump. We have democratic elections taking place. We have measures within our Constitution to remove him. We will do this peacefully and with nonviolence and with love, love for our country, love for our fellow citizens, love for the people on this planet, and that includes especially love for the people of Iran. No more killing. You will be remembered in history as the ones who decided to, that you took the initiative. You ended it. No more killing. Even when we've killed you, even when we've killed Iranians, you were stronger than us. You were stronger and you said, no, we're not going to be like them. We're not going to assassinate people. We're not going to bomb places. We are going to expect the American people to democratically fix their problem. I promise you, I will give you my entire being and my soul to this in this year of 2020. There's no reason. There's no reason. Thank you for listening to this request. Please consider it and bless you. Stop going.